Hello, everyone. Uh, once again, we're glad to have you join us for our uh, Bible studies here coming to you from uh, University Assembly of God Church in Waxach, Texas. And we're continuing our series in uh, lessons from the life of Job. And uh, today we're uh, doing our fifth session, I believe. Uh, but anyway, we're uh, very glad to have you, and I hope that you're enjoying this, and I hope you will tell, tell your friends and have them uh, join us as well. Uh, last week, uh, we were uh, talking about the low points in, uh, uh, for Job in this uh, story, which there were many. Uh, and so we, uh, and one of the major ones uh, had to do with uh, uh, his friends, three friends that came to counsel him, and uh, how Job responded to their so-called help. And so we were looking at that and kind of closing that out, and one of the last things we looked at was uh, Job uh, 19, verse 2, uh, where uh, Job complains, How long will you torment me and crush me with your words? And uh, then a very good one, and uh, we noticed the sarcasm here in uh, Job. Uh, what help you are to the weak. Uh, Job uh, didn't think he was any weaker than they are. And uh, what a help you are, and what a counsel you have given to one without wisdom. Well, Job has exclaimed over and over again that he's as wise as they are. Uh, what helpful insights you have abundantly provided. Uh, and so... Uh, we closed out with the uh, lesson number 12 from Job. Uh, advice of friends is often good, but not always. And I want to reemphasize that some, uh, sometimes uh, we get very, very good counsel from friends, and we all ought to realize that it is very wise for us to, in difficult situations, to seek the counsel of as many people as we possibly can. But in, here in the book of Job, we learn a lesson, and that is that uh, advice of uh, good friends is not always good advice. And so uh, we watch out for uh, bad advice from good friends. It's a lesson that we, uh, we learn from Job. And then uh, we had just started this, and we kind of ran out of time, so we're coming back to this. The lowest uh, point many scholars believe in the book of Job is uh, uh, right at the end of his uh, Job's dialogue with his three friends, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, in chapter 31, chapter 31, in chapter, in fact, chapter 31, uh, the end of verse 40 says, uh, the words of Job are ended. And some suggest that the verses 35 through 37 are, uh, the lowest point because uh, Job has, uh, this is the view of many scholars, uh, Job has increasingly become impatient with God. And so it kind of depends on how you take these words, but uh, uh, I read them for us here, uh, Job chapter 31, verses 35 through uh, 37, and you can follow along in your translation. Oh, that I had one to hear me. Behold, here is my signature. Let the Almighty answer me, and the indictment which my adversary has written. Surely I would carry it on my shoulder, and I would bind it to myself like a crown. I would declare to him the number of my steps. Like a prince, I would approach him. Now, it's hard to uh, read into this and, and know for sure just from reading those words what Job's attitude was. But like I say, many believe that he's uh, very haughty with God. He's uh, here. He uh, uh, is expressing his uh, frustration about not being able to speak directly with God. He says, oh, that I had one to hear me. And then uh, he, he says, and I'm putting my signature on this. In other words, uh, I'm declaring uh, the way that it is. Uh, let Almighty answer me, and the indictment which my adversaries has written, uh, I would 
bear it proudly, so to speak, as a crown and, and so on here. So he boasts that he would uh, respond to every accusation. And Job has said this over and again, and we'll see this some more as we go along in the story, uh, that he he believes uh, he believes in his uh, righteousness. And uh, we need to understand that when we speak of our righteousness, if we're talking about the righteousness that we have in Jesus Christ, then that's okay. The fact of the matter is we need to be able to declare our righteousness. If, if for any reason we can't, uh, declare our righteousness, then we're we're in trouble, and we need to uh, get down on our knees and be seeking God because He wants to impute to us the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And so, if we uh, cannot claim righteousness, uh, then we need to do something about it. But we need to distinguish claiming the righteousness that we have in Jesus Christ and ourself and and self righteousness. And the issue here is whether or not Job has become self-righteous. Uh, but uh, here he does seem to be uh, rather demanding uh, and uh, accusatory. So he says, and I would require the Almighty to answer me. He, uh, Job uh, has uh, grown to the place where uh, at this point he believes that God has an obligation uh, to give him an answer. The fact of the matter is God doesn't have any ap obligation to give us any answers for anything. Uh, but Job seems to uh, believe he, he can insist upon this. Well, uh, having looked at those uh, low points in Job, it's a joy to move on to look at the high points in Job. And there are a number of really uh, outstanding things. I mean, just marvelous things. When you think about Job, in his context, in his setting, at his time, uh, remember this is the oldest, uh, uh, many, most believe this is the oldest book in the, in the Bible, and uh, think of the relationship that Job uh, has here with God. In fact, uh, we have to start there, I believe, in looking at the high points in Job, because Job starts out on a high point uh, with God himself declaring Job to be a righteous man. So, uh, and I believe, I've come to believe in this study that uh, actually for many, many years, Job had this uh, relationship with God that was, uh, uh, that was uh, very rewarding, uh, very sure, uh, and uh, he understood it to, uh, as uh, correctly so, he understood it to be uh, based upon his response of faith uh, to uh, uh, God. And so uh, Job understands this, I believe. And so it starts out here with uh, at this high point of uh, God himself declaring Job to be a righteous man. And in fact, verse, that was verse one, the very first verse in the, in the story. And then uh, just uh, uh, seven verses later, uh, in fact, God said, there's no one like Job in blamelessness and righteousness of fearing, quote, fearing God and turning away from evil, end quote. So it starts out on a, on a very high point here, because that's amazing. Uh, when you think about, again, when we've talked before, when you think about the fact that Job was living when he was, and uh, this is way before any scripture was written, and uh, way before uh, uh, most of the Old Testament account. So uh, this is amazing uh, here. But it goes downhill fast uh, from this point on. As you know, it was after this that uh, God uh, allowed Satan to test Job, including taking away all of his livelihood, uh, taking away his, all of his children and probably some grandchildren. And what a devastating thing. And uh, then, of course, Satan goes back to God and God allows him to cause source come over all of Job's body. So things go downhill very fast from uh, this point here in chapter one. And so it is not until chapter nine, verse 15, that we come to another uh, another high point. And this is, I believe, a, a really uh, significant one in uh, Job 9, uh, 15. Job says, for though I were right, I could not answer. I would have to implore the mercy of my judge. So Job understands, and he states here 
uh, the importance of God's mercy. He says, okay, so I'm right. And I could, uh, you know, I, I still could not answer God. I would have to implore his mercy. So the mercy of God, Job's understanding of the mercy of God and the necessity of the mercy of God is uh, extremely uh, significant here. And so here we have lesson number 13 then. We will always need the mercy of a loving God, no matter how uh, good of a person we are. We all want to strive to be the best uh, possible uh, people we can, person we can be. And we ought to be, uh, have a, satis a satisfying awareness of the fact that we are uh, doing our best with God's help to live a righteous life. And no matter how much uh, his imputed righteousness is or, uh, or whatever, our, our holy, uh, personal holiness, we'll always need the mercy of a loving God. And then uh, uh, one of the really, really uh, most significant of the high points is where Job recognizes uh, his need for a mediator an advocate between himself and God. And so let's uh, go back to uh, Job uh, 9, verse uh, 33, uh, and read this, one of the most uh, famous uh, verses in the book of Job. Uh, Job complains here, there is no umpire between us, no one to lay his hand upon of both of us and so uh, think of the concept that we're talking about here a mediator an advocate uh, Job uh, un understands how uh, insignificant he is he understands how lowly he is as a create uh, a creature of God and how much uh, superior God is to him and now he's in uh, in a exceedingly troubling a time he's in a, a very troubling situation and so he senses uh, he automatically senses this need of uh, someone to fill in the gap someone to come in as a mediator uh, someone who can get on uh, both levels uh, uh, not only our level but God's level and uh, be a mediator and be an advocate and so jo uh, Job repeats this and uh, uh, idea and talks about it over and over again. In fact, uh, many scholars believe that perhaps this is one of the uh, major points of the book of Job is uh, dealing with the problem of uh, God's transcendence in relationship to the human situation and uh, how uh, God uh, is uh, goes about mediating that. So uh, this uh, it's no surprise really it shouldn't be a surprise how much this is repeated in in the book of job so uh next time we see it is job 13 verse 3 i would like to speak to the almighty i desire to argue with him uh perhaps the term argue is a little bit strong at this point now job probably does come to that uh, but i think maybe it would be better to say i would like to speak to god i desire to reason with him reason with God. But anyway, the idea is there of uh, ha being able to uh, communicate with God. Uh, and then just a, a, some verses down in that same chapter, uh, 13 verses 15 through 16, uh, Job says, I will argue my ways before him, or again, I will discuss my ways before him, and, and this will be my salvation. And so here, uh, this last part of this uh, uh, statement is very important for us to understand the significance of that. What Job is saying is, I, I just know that if I could present my case to God, uh, that everything would be okay. And that in presenting my case to him, that would in fact uh, be, my, be my salvation. God would understand and everything would be okay. Uh, and then again, in this same chapter 13, verses 22 and 24, uh, Job says, uh, call and I will answer you. Uh, God, if you'll just uh, call my name and call out to me, I will answer you. And then he asks the question, why do you hide your face from me? Because that was what Job was experiencing. Job was experiencing uh, the fact that uh, 
it uh, seemed to him that God did not hear him. God was not listening to him. Uh, God had no, uh, Job had no assurance in his mind that uh, God was hearing him. And so uh, from Job's perspective, uh, there's a problem. Uh, God is hiding his face from him. And then in uh, chapter 14, uh, verse 15, Job expresses his longing. You will call and I will answer you. So here is the idea in an expression of hope. Uh, it's uh, Job has been struggling with this, uh, feeling like he is, uh, is a just a righteous man and he's suffering these things and doesn't understand why he is suffering these things and if he could just have a conversation with God God can explain this to him and he Job in turn could explain his situation to him and so he has this hope if God will just call to me I will certainly answer him um, and continuing this uh, uh, theme of uh, having access to God somewhere or another, he says in 16, 19, even now, behold, my witness is in heaven and my advocate is on high. So somehow Job uh, at this time uh, here uh, feels like that even though he's not uh, realizing it in the literal sense, he still has this feeling that uh, that he's uh, getting through to heaven, that uh, there's a witness in heaven for him, and, and he has an advocate on high. That's a really high hope. Uh, that's a really a high uh, 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 thought. Uh, in Job 16, 21, just two verses down, Oh, that a man might plead with God as a man does with his neighbor. In other words, that's pretty... Uh, pretty uh, straightforward isn't it uh joe would like to be able to talk this over just like you can talk things over with it with a neighbor uh, just like a, a man face to face with a man uh plead uh, plead my case with god face to face as a neighbor but uh, the situation is not that way uh and so uh, this time he expresses the the negative idea that uh he he would like to have an audience with God, but it's been cut off. Uh, Job 19, 8, he has walled up my way to him so that I cannot pass. Job can't pass the wall to get to God. And Job 23, uh, verses 3 through 7, and I'm not including all, all of that in there, and you'll want to look that up sometime, uh, but uh, I picked out a part of it to uh, make a point here. Oh, that I knew where I might find him. I would present my case and fill my mouth with arguments. I would know what he says to me, what he would say to me. In other words, I would know what God's thinking and so I could answer. And I would be delivered forever from my judge. Once again, Job uh, has this hope and has this belief that if he could just have an audience with God, everything could be straightened out between him and God and everything would be all right. I would, and here he expresses that I would be delivered forever from my judge. Uh, so lesson number 14 then, uh, God does listen to us because we, uh, we know we're jumping ahead to the end of the story actually, but uh, we know that God does uh, finally speak to Job and everything did come out okay once God uh, spoke to him. Now, Job gets a, a bit of pretty good chastising, as we will see when we get to that point. But uh, the fact of the matter is, God does listen to us and hears us when we cry out to him. We do have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Praise the Lord. Uh, isn't it wonderful that uh, we live in the time when we do? Uh, Job uh, lived an exceeding a great amount of time before when Jesus Christ came and uh, uh, died and was resurrected and ascended back to the Heavenly Father and became our intercessor and our advocate. And so we, uh, we're, we're extremely privileged that we uh, uh, have the reality that uh, Job hoped for in a mediator between us and God. Uh, and then another uh, high point 
in Job is Job uh, 10, 12. You have granted me life and loving kindness, and your care has preserved my spirit. Um, one of the really uh, significant things and wonderful things about this is if you look, uh, you ought to look that up in, in, in chapter 10 uh, and look at the context. And, but the fact of the matter is, Job was going through a very terrible, terrible time here, and he expresses a lot of uh, discouragement and what we might call depression and uh, uh, consternation, frustration, and uh, just a terrible, a terrible uh, situation for him. And yet, in that, uh, in that, in that context, he can say, "You have granted life to me, and your loving kindness, and your care has preserved my spirit." Uh, so it's a, that's a very, a very uh, a significant high point here in the book of Job. Uh, and then, of course, another uh, one of the very uh, uh, well-known. Uh, high points in Job is where he says, though God slay me, I will trust him. Here in my New American Standard, Job chapter 13, verse 15, though he slay me, I will hope in him. Uh, and that, of course, is a great expression of faith. Uh, and Job uh, expresses elsewhere in the book that he, uh, that he uh, believes he's not going to ever come out of this and he's going to die. Uh, he never loses his hope uh, that he will be okay with God, and we'll talk about that here in just a little bit. But uh, uh, he has this faith that even if he dies uh, from all of this and God slays him, he can still hope in God. And that's a wonderful, wonderful truth and a wonderful affirmation of faith. And now I want to read this one here. Uh, Job... Uh, 14 uh, verses 16 and 17. It's kind of a long one, so I want to, I didn't put it on here, and I'll, I'll read these uh, uh, verses. Uh, Job 14 verses 16 and 17. Uh, you, do, you do not observe my sin. My transgression is sealed up in a bag, and you wrap up my iniquity. Uh, here, now, Job. Job's, uh, uh, remember, Job's on a roller coaster here. Uh, we've seen the low points, and now we're seeing the high points, but these don't, these high points don't all come in a row, and the low points don't all come in a row. They're, uh, they're ups and downs, ups and downs. And so Job gets very low at, at some points, but here's a very high one where he uh, um, has this uh, sense and this conviction that, uh, um, God will, God has and will pardon his transgressions if he will be obedient and live in faith in relationship to God. God will take that all into consideration. And he says, you will not observe my sin. My transgressions will be sealed up in a bag and you will wrap up my iniquities. In other words, God will take care of all of our unrighteousness, Job says. And God will take care. So it's a it's a, he doesn't always feel that way, uh, but here he's expressed that, and it's a, a wonderful high point here in, in the book of Job. Uh, oh, this is, this is uh, uh, perhaps, uh, well, it, it's, it's a really great one. Uh, if a man dies, will he live again? Uh, yes. Because, and I'm, I inserted the yes there because that is the answer that Job uh, uh, anticipates because he says, all the days of my struggle, I will wait until my change comes. Uh, and so this is, in my opinion, this is an expression of uh, Job's hope of resurrection. If a man dies, will he live again? Yes. So I'll, all the days of my struggle, I will wait until my change comes. What kind of a change is he talking about? Well, the way we would understand it is a transfigured uh, body. Uh, I know I'm going to die at some point, Job says. Maybe I'll die of this condition that I'm suffering with right now. And will I live again? Yes, I believe I will. So 
all the days of my struggle here, I'm going to wait until my, until my change comes. Uh, and in fact, this is even uh, even uh, clearer in the Job 19, verses 26 through 27. Even after my skin is destroyed, uh, Job uh, uh, understood that uh, these his condition could lead to death. Uh, and even after my skin is destroyed, yet from my flesh I shall see God. I myself will behold him. And so here is, uh, in my opinion, a rather clear expression of Job's hope of resurrection. Even after the skin is, uh, even after my skin is destroyed, in other words, that's a poetical way of saying when I, when I die of this condition, yet from my flesh I shall see God. I myself will behold him. So, uh, lesson number 15. In Job, the oldest book in the Bible, we learn about the hope of resurrection. Uh, somehow, Job uh, was just really a, a, a super individual in relationship to God. And somehow, God, uh, Job had opened himself up and God had, re uh, God had revealed these uh, wonderful things to Job. I mean... Uh, a resurrection uh, is was not even a, a developed doctrine in the in the latter part of the Old Testament. It's not really a, a developed doctrine until uh, Jesus comes and uh, and uh, experiences the resurrection. Uh, and it was a, de a debate in Jesus' time, as we know, between the Pharisees and the Sadducees about the resurrection. So for Job to express this uh, hope. At this time is just an amazing, amazing thing. The revelation that he had received and accepted. Just an amazing, amazing thing. Um, and then, and, and uh, then uh, this one here is also uh, just about as amazing. And now notice what this says and think of the implications. Think of what Job is saying here. I know that my Redeemer lives. And at the last, he will take his stand on the earth. Now, what in the world does he mean? Well, I don't think it's very hard to uh, understand what he means. Uh, uh, he says, uh, for one thing, he expresses the truth that his God is a redeemer. You know, uh, uh, in most religions, uh, God's not, uh, not really a redeemer. Uh, you have to pacify him, and you just only hope that maybe you'll somehow satisfy him. But uh, Job knows his God as a Redeemer. I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will take his stand on the earth. So uh, Job is expressing the idea that in the end God is going to be victorious. Uh, at the last he will take his stand on the earth, and that's exactly what Jesus is going to do. That's exactly what God's going to do. At the last... Uh, Jesus will come uh, and defeat Satan and establish his kingdom here on the earth. And then after that, uh, New Jerusalem will uh, come down out of heaven and settle on the earth. And God himself will come down here to earth and make uh, uh, earth his uh, throne. So uh, this expresses uh, a truth that is uh, some kind of really super a special revelation to this man, Job, way back in that time. At the last, he will take his stand on the earth, Job declares. So lesson number 16. In Job, again, the oldest book in the Bible, we learn that God will ultimately be victorious over all evil, over Satan and all evil. And another uh, high point in Job 23, uh, 10, uh, he knows the way that I take. And again, one of the more uh, well-known statements in uh, Job, when he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. So what an expression, what an expression of hope. Job has been going through this trial and all this time, and he still has this hope that when all of this is over, uh, he, will, he will come forth as gold. God tests him that he will come forth as gold. Uh, Job 23, 17, uh, another expression of hope. And it, Job was very, very down at this point, And he says, I am not silenced by this darkness, nor by the deep gloom that covers me. 
So Job is saying, no matter how dark it's getting for me, no, how, no matter how deep the gloom, I still have my hope and I still express my faith in God. Well, uh, the ultimate high point of Job is in the uh, last chapters uh, after God appears to Job and speaks to him and gives him a pretty good reprimand. Uh, Job chapter 40, verses 3 through 5, and Job chapter 42, verses 1 through 6, where Job speaks a couple of times very briefly to God. Uh, he, he reaches a high point, and then interesting, he reaches the highest point here uh, when he humbles himself. He admits he has misspoken, uh, or he retracts what he has said, and he repents, and he becomes silent before God. And so lesson number 17, God will always have the final word. We can never out-debate God. The, the reality is God is so much wiser than we are. He, his ways are so much higher than our ways. Uh, and uh, so uh, what we need to do is uh, keep that in mind. His ways are above our ways uh, so far. And there's no way that uh, we would have the final word. His final word is the best word. Uh, and so we, our place is to yield to him and submit our lives to him. Well, we're out of time for today. Uh, again, glad to have you join us here. And uh, we hope you have a wonderful week. And we hope you'll be back with us uh, for our next session. Lord bless you.